Hello again, and welcome to Genetic Databases and Online, genetic, online Molecular Genetic Tools. Today I will be walking you through, in this video I'll be walking you through, exercise 3, which is to repeat the exercise 2, but apply different parameters to the primer, to the primers. Firstly, we're going to apply a GC content of 48%, a TM melting or primer milling content of a range and then a specific one at 52.2 degrees and increasing the primer length to 22 base pairs. So we're going to go back to primer, primer 3 which is our primer construction website and we're going to grab from our uh, DNA database of Japan and this is the word file that I, I originally told you guys to save hopefully you've got yours there so I'm simply going to copy and paste the data, so the gene, into the uh, into the Primer 3 web page as we've done already in, in Exercise 2. If not, go back and have a look at that one. We're going to name it, and instead of renaming it POMC default, I'm going to go 48% GC. Very important to name things like this. Now, for this one, as, as I've named, we're trying to get to the sequence. Um, 48% GC content. As you can see here, under general primer picking conditions, we've got a primer GC content. Now it's got a range here from 20 to 80. We don't want to have a range, we want to drive it to 48%. So we want to have 48 in the minimum, 48 in the optimal, and 48 at the max. If you simply put the optimal result in there, you're not going to get it as you want because the program will find more optimal and uh, less complementarity and, and better suited uh, primers. And I'll display that firstly. I'll display that actually firstly by leaving it at 20 and 80 and showing that to you. So I generate the primers and as you can see at that stage, even if I do not drive to that situation, the GC content stays at 55.00 for the foot left primer and 50 for the right primer. If you if you are very quick to notice, those are actually the same primers generated simply by leaving the defaults there. Therefore, by simply putting in an optimal GC percentage that we want to drive towards is not sufficient enough. Therefore, we must change the minimum and maximums to what we are looking for. So, we drive it there, and there are no sequences, and there are no primers suitable. As you can see, there says try relaxing various parameters, including self complementarity, max and milligo, and so forth. Now, this is part of what we found, therefore we must document it. And in my another uh, Word document, I have placed what I have found. So in case I ever need to find that or look back at it, it's there. Now, on to the second one, which is to have a TM, or a temperature annealing melting temperature of 53.3 .3 to 60.1. Let's double check that. All the way back to the start. 50, uh, 53.6 to 60.1. So, we need to go back to Primer 3. And we need to grab our code that we have here. And we need to paste it into there. And then we need to here, as with the GC content, we need to be very careful in what we place the optimum. We're not looking for an optimum, we're looking for a GC code. So 60.1 at the maximum, oh, we're looking for a range, 53.6, here we go, 53.6, we're not looking to drive it in, we're just looking for a range, let's see, most likely, I wouldn't be surprised if it generates, here we go, look, it has generated very similar, actually has generated the same uh, primers as it was from the original. As you can see here, I have pasted that up, and you can compare that to just running it on default. Now, if we're looking for a 55.2 annealing temperature simple, which is the next one, 
I'll just follow the same thing. We'll go back. And we're driving it to 55.2. As you can see, I'm placing the minimum, max, and the optimal all at one. If not, the program does not listen to you and doesn't do what you want. As you can see, doesn't like it and didn't generate any one any primers at all. Now I would name that and I would generate it and place it into my Word document. So I know 55.2 TM annealing temperature does not generate primers that we are looking for. If we are trying to increase the primer length, here we go. We'll go back to primer 3. Reset the form. By resetting the form, it resets the defaults that they were looking for, but also clears the primer code that we were using. So we need to paste, copy it, and then we need to paste it into primer 3. There we go. And we're looking to raise the primer size to 22. Remember, we're trying to drive it there. Do not give the program the ability to be lax upon what we're searching for. Upon doing that, as you can see, it has generated new primers and of length of 22 which is what we're looking for so I have copied and pasted that into here into another word document and of course it's come up with other primers different sizes different lengths different types in there and don't have to be considerably complementary to the other ones I hope that this has helped you discover more about how to generate primers and learning about primer size, primer annealing temperatures and primer GC content and how to manipulate them by using primer 3. Thank you. Hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.